That would be me. Look who we're hanging with. Brian O'Halloran. Jason David Frank. Humberto Ramos. Please do not change channel. Welcome to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm T.W. Commenter. I am Allison Murray. And I'm and, Jeff Kaufman. And that's Jeff Kaufman. <laughs> We're hanging with author Jeff Kaufman at MegaCon 2018. We hope you'll go ahead and subscribe. So you can come. We have authors. We have filmmakers, musicians, uh, cosplayers. What, cosplayers, talented people, homeless yeah. guys we saw outside. I prefer the homeless guys. They're more interesting. They are very, very yes. interesting. They, they have yes. stories. I'm pro-homeless. I yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm an I'm artist, brother. Ramen noodles. You know, if it wasn't yeah. for ramen noodles and yeah. large refrigerator boxes, the artist community wouldn't have a community. And big sandwiches that you can save for a couple weeks. That's right. Great. That's right. Well, you know, the right subs from different places are like Twinkies. Right. They don't have expiration dates. No, you just don't put mayo on them. You hold the mayo. You hold the mayo. Yes. Right. Mustard will last forever, though. Uh, mayo, yes, don't do that. Absolutely. No. Yeah. Uh, so? Bad. Jeff has been about a year. Yeah, it's been a little bit. We've yeah. knocked out a couple books since then. Uh, just a and wow. we told you about 9-11, which, uh, which was just coming out. And we premiered it in New York City, which was kind of scary when you're sitting behind the 9-11 yeah. banner. Yeah. But it's about a hero and a villain who had uh, people in the building. And the hero becomes a villain, the villain becomes a hero. It's, wow. It was a really, it's a passion project. It wasn't like, you know, uh, our children's book, Liar, which, you know, has a different <laughs> flavor to it. Um, I love it. <laughs> That's a passion project. That's a passion project. Just That's saying. a spicy meatball. <laughs> there you go. So I don't know where that came from. I'm sorry. Oh, so, wow. Um, yes. Yeah, it, it, it's 9-11, uh, when we first heard about yeah. it, it, it is, it's a wonderful exploration of perspective. Because villains never think they're villains. And, and heroes, yeah, I don't think yeah. really ever think they're heroes. And then when you shift up and one becomes the other, yeah, it's really easy for a hero to become bad. He just needs to have something to do. It. Oh, you killed my wife, good. I'm killing everybody. A villain doesn't understand oh, so what you've it, seen to be Deadpool. a good person. Yeah, right. well, Deadpool. <laughs> you know, actually, my, actually, two of my friends created Deadpool. So okay, okay. There you go. <laughs> it was funny. Fabian was the writer who created, yes. you know, with Rob Liefeld. Yep. And Fabian, I, I did a thing with uh, Deadpool in my booth last night, and I posted it, and Fabian goes, it's not scarred up enough, <laughs> not enough scabs. <laughs> uh, Deadpool can be good looking too. Yeah, yeah. So it happens. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, it Sexy legs at least, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, the entire universe has already had to hear from Ryan Reynolds personally about Ryan Reynolds' ass. Yes, yes. So apparently there's a thing that, you know, I don't know, when the guys drew, drew him back in the day, I don't know that they ever had in mind Ryan Reynolds out there. <laughs> you know, Ryan Reynolds always imagined himself that way. I mean, yes, and he still he, does. And it, <laughs> a lot of people don't know the story behind that, but uh, it's a little weird because uh, when they put him in Wolverine Origins, he did so well. And the reason why they sewed his mouth shut in the movies is because Hugh Jackman he was said, "No, this guy's not stealing my movie," and they sewed his mouth shut. So that's why. Ryan always has a problem in the news when they talk about it. Yeah, yeah. When they, he always riffs on Hugh Jackman because he only did the movie because he was promised that he would have his own movie. But since they sewed his mouth shut, you know, nobody. It, had to be it, it took years for it to thing, come yeah. out. So, wow, a little wow. bit of hero trivia. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Okay. I am host of the Nerdy News, so I, I'm very good <laughs> yeah. about that. He's going to yeah. bring everything. Yeah. Uh, all right. So we have 9/11. We also have our new our new book that came out in September. It's called. Scary Fails, Tesla and Hyde. It's about Nikola Tesla and Edward Hyde. They're 28 years old, they live in Vegas, and they hunt the fake fairy tales. I mean, for example, two of the dwarves are drug dealers in Mexico. Santa runs a sweatshop in Bangladesh. It's, there is nothing not to like about this movie. Oh, I'm going no. long ball all the time. I just, all, uh, just all the way in. Mean, he drove all in on this. Yeah, I, I think I'm lucky that I don't work for Marvel or DC because nobody can tell me that I can't do it. Uh, you know, which is... <laughs> You know, you know, that is the best that's way, right. to, that's the best way to get under a creative mind, is to go in there. There's no way you can do, oh yeah? Oh, I could write something right now. We would, we would all be, we would all be contract killers in like two seconds if we had to. <laughs> it, it, you know? Your mind's always just Done, working. I'm buying that one. Uh, yeah, 
on, Ellie, come on. You you did this, but you you did the first interview. Come on. I did. Get in there. So this year you did a panel. I did a panel called uh, basically uh, how to fail in comic books or uh, how not to blow your money. Uh -huh. And we had about 70 people and uh, basically I stand there alone and just beat on people for 70 minutes about their dreams. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, See, I, I'm, I'm, there you go. That's, like, that's more of a wrestling star. I'm, I'm more a boxer. Ten minutes in the chair, you're out of here. Yeah, you know, that's the way I'm, it works. I'm a sprinter. I, I get told it's over and I got to go. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. I, I didn't even know I started. <laughs> But like oh, I said, it's fun. God. The fun part about being a writer is you get away with a lot of stuff. Yeah. Because people always go, it's okay, he's a writer. See, I don't get away with stuff like an artist. But, you know, I almost got no, the no, same no. benefit. But, you know, the great thing about being a writer is is that when you say the voice is in your head, nobody brings a straight jacket. They bring you a typewriter instead. Yes. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I look at it like this. I get to torture my artists, which is fun. But uh, And when people go, where does it come from? I wish I could tell you. Yeah. I, you you know, the thing about writing, when people say, oh, I want to be a writer, and they think it's a sexy lifestyle, it really uh -huh. isn't. You're sitting there in Starbucks, you know, you with the other 50 guys who want to be writing stuff, who are just checking their Facebook page. And, uh, you know, when it's over, you're going, well, is it good? And if people buy it, it's good. If they don't buy it, it's, buy not. It, it's not. And if it's right. really good, it happens after you die. So it's good that people yeah, appreciate yeah, no, it. No, yeah. If it's really, really yeah, good, yeah, you get time. to live on ramen until you can't anymore. Yeah. And then your great great grandchildren live in mansions <laughs> off of your money. Off of your money. And they're always upset that people are taking advantage of you. That's right. Yes, yeah, you <laughs> took advantage of my great great grandfather. <laughs> write me a check. That's a hundred years. They're still fighting over the Conan Doyle estate. Oh, I, I actually know about that. That's, yeah. a, that's Isn't uh, it amazing, right? Yeah. So you know, be really good at it, and and five generations get to fight over your stuff. It's always amazing to me. You know, when you talk about ramen. I was so broke, we have to split the ramen. You know, you got to, you, there were 16 yeah, cents, yeah. but you had to go at a certain time of the week. Because they were like 10 for a dollar, but if you went regular, it was like 6 for a dollar, and it was like, then you couldn't get like bread. Yeah, you know, so, if, you know, on yeah, the internet, we want true. everybody to know, if you want to know if you have artistic tendencies, you need to take a package of ramen with your hand. If you can tell what splits it evenly into five with one move, you're probably meant to draw, write, be a filmmaker. There's destiny in there. If you could tell exactly how many pieces you can get. Well, five meals, that's kind of uppity. I had to go six. <laughs> oh, really? So you were. I mean, I would like to get that one. Skills. And you have to chew. You have to counter chew. So that you <laughs> pretend that you're eating a lot longer. Yeah, it lasts longer. That's for, if you're a one chewer, man, you're rich. You know, I just sit there and just go. Okay. okay. If you just gulp. Yeah. And if you do it in Spanish, it takes longer. So that's the trick of it. As far as you Chinese, know, you'll never chew. get there because you can't do the X's. Uh-uh, yeah. Uh-uh, yeah. yeah. Who, uh, who designs your book covers? Uh, well, this book was done by Francesco. It's a great artist out of Arizona. He lives on a mountaintop. He bought this big house with no electricity. And I said, well, you got a good deal in the house, but you got to get electricity, don't you? He goes, oh, no, I'll take care of that later. Well, three years later, he's still in the trailer, and um, the house looks great. <laughs> um, but I'm doing it. It got messy. Yeah. And Liar's actually being kick-started right now. Uh, we have about five days left on it. A lot of independents now do a Kickstarter and then release it simultaneously to stores and to the people who bought the book. And it's such a great way for me to be able to meet with uh, our readers. And they'll, oh, yeah. they'll text me, they'll call me, they'll go, oh, and, and we get this too? Because at a store, you can get the book, but when you go through Kickstarter, you get all the cool stuff that I've hidden in the warehouse. You know, oh, as the great. media has changed, the way creative people do business. It absolutely has. It's amazing to see how much more we can interact with yeah. readers and fans, how much more we can interact with each other. Uh, in the digital media, I was amazed to see, in 10 years ago, you know, if you were an independent anything, you know, find the other guy to work with. Find yep. the cover designer, find an editor, oh, yeah. find, now it's, it's all the right there. I mean, for example, let's say Allison, you say, Jeff, I have this idea, okay? It's about zombies in Melbourne, and we're gonna call it the Melbourne. And I don't have the money to do it. And what would I tell you? You'd tell me... Uh, go to Kickstarter. Oh, Kickstarter, man. Yeah. You go, listen, I got friends. Oh, yeah. And yeah, then yeah. you beg you beg all your friends. And you say, you say, Elsa goes, well, I don't want to beg my friends. I said, they beg you for stuff. And you go, okay, so they okay. can give me $10. Because you've lent a lot of people $10. I mean, I can tell you're right. a nice person. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm a nice yes, person, I too. Have. You are. <laughs> yes, and I these have. people need to give you that $10 back. Okay. And they can do it on Kickstarter. That makes sense. I shared a room with her once. 
I, you got her all wrong. Oh no. Oh, she's the she's the taker. She's the sister. She just knows. I'm the baby. She she just knows. I'm the beat her up. It was hers, but I moved in with her. <laughs> I'm Nina's cat piss. <laughs> oh. <laughs> See, I just don't deal. See, now they have little boxes that are so good that they're supposed to do I remember you used to have the big bag. Now the thing does it for you. He's, he's got her as nice and generous. And I can oh, be. You got to realize this show's going to end. And I'm going to walk up to you. What are you talking about? And then she'll take you out. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's probably a good people deal. People are nice on camera. They, they you have got kickbacks and gloves. Like Allison and I, we're, we're close. I know wow. to take care of Allison. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Yes. That's why I love you. I know. It's good. <laughs> well, I'm easy to okay. Oh, sure. Once again, we've had a blast hang with Jeff Kaufman today. I'm Allison Murray. I'm G.W. Pomager, and I'm just staff. And I'm Jeff Kaufman, and this is my book. <laughs> but before we go, we would like to give a very special thank you to our partners at Krypton Radio out of LA, Famous Faces and Funnies, off the chain radio with Yvonne Mason, Space Coast Comics. Asylum Convention Entertainment Services with Heather Reed and our great friends at Summon Unique Magazine. These are the folks that share our videos all over the World Wide Web, and we hope you will too. Don't forget to hit that like button, leave a comment, let us know what you think of today's show and our guests. You can also check our guest links below. Remember to subscribe, log on, and stay tuned to see who we're hanging with next. You should work for FedEx. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm telling you. That's a gift. Ow!